Welcome back. Well, I'm home. Um, I wanted to go flying this morning, uh, take a quick flight to Mount Pocono Airport uh, to check out more aviation. Um, they're also an avionics shop and maintenance shop. Uh, check out some stuff that I might be doing with my panel uh, this annual, which is next month, February. Um, so, but I decided not to, even though if you take a quick peek here, the ceilings are pretty good. The sun's coming up, um, but it's supposed to be heavily, heavily windy later and if you have to think about the weather two different times and three times you're better off grounding yourself and driving there instead of flying there because the wind's supposed to be gusting to about 35 miles an hour and the winds at 25 to 28 miles an hour um, especially and it's even worse as you go towards uh, the Poconos so it's a bit a little bit later on today so I'm gonna be safe about it and I'm gonna drive there and then check out the avionics and then I'll see you guys there. See you in a bit. Well, we're driving. I would rather be flying. Well, the car's driving right now. I'd rather be flying, to be honest with you. Um, but I do see a lot of um, haze and fog um, out towards the west, towards PA, where I was going to go. So I'm glad I didn't fly out there. Um, but we are on the parkway here. And um, we should be there probably, it's saying, in about 30 miles or so from my house here. Well, not from my house, about 15 minutes, or uh, 15 miles uh, behind us. So it's not too far away from my house. It's probably um, about an hour time wise, and in about 15 minutes in the plane, 15, 20 minutes in the plane. So we're only cruising about 76 miles an hour. by itself um, for a couple seconds there um, but I'd rather be doing 155 knots that's more fun anyway I'll see you guys when we get to Mount Pocono and we'll check out some avionics that I might be doing in my plane this annual I am not 100% sure but we're gonna go check them out see you in a bit so again when in doubt don't fly because it's snowing up here in the Pocono area, um, and you can see the cloud cover is pretty low, very low. I uh, just see the top of those trees over there, and it's snowing. So I would have had to have turned around and went back to Orange County anyway, and uh, would have stunts would have lost a lot of time. So I think I, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty conservative pilot. So you know I. If I ever have to second guess myself with any type of weather, I do not go flying. I'll just drive, unfortunately. Even if I did an IFR, if I was flying IFR still, it is 28 degrees now. Freezing conditions with the snow and some rain. Uh, you don't want to over, obviously, have ice on your wings and then you have another bad day. So, getting there. We're about a uh, half an hour away. See you guys in a bit. And this is why you trust your instincts. Uh, and Fourth Flight did say patches of snow. So definitely a great idea not to fly this morning, as you can see here. And uh, I always talk about technology, folks. And this is one of the reasons why I talk about it. Uh, the Fourth Flight app went over the weather um, and called in. And this is what they predicted Exit right ahead. this is what I'm going through right now and definitely cannot fly in this type of weather and you look, you look at the tops of the trees over to our right to our left uh, that's the tops there <laughs> and so I'll be way below uh, what the, my plane was meant to be for and with no de-icing and none of that stuff so again like I said before you have to second guess yourself on weather or even winds or anything when you're flying don't fly I'm at the airport, Mount, Mount Pocono, Mount Pocono Municipal Airport, 
and it is basically snowing here. There's the parking lot. So I am lucky I did not fly here. So uh, I never would have made it here in the first place. I would have turned around and went back to Orange County. So I never would have gotten in here. Okay, I'm gonna head inside. Hey folks, welcome back. So we are here at Moira Aviation and I wanted you to check out the Dynon system. Um, and this is the Skyview HDX and it's a 10 inch screen. And that's what it would basically look like in the Mooney. Basically this exact setup times two. Uh, obviously I won't have two of these um, or the comm stack here, it'll be one. But well, this is basically the system that I was talking to, to you guys about before. I met the guys in Oshkosh, and this is really a really cool system. As you see, it gives you um, your uh, fuel levels digitally, all your gauges for your engine. Um, cylinder temperatures, so on and so forth, that goes on and on and on. Everything in one screen, and of course, when you have a flight plan, it puts it up exactly where you're at on the right side. And you can change this settings um, on your display any way you want, um, So, which is really, really cool. If you go down to display, which is right here, and you can basically change how you want to do it. Uh, you can make it a full screen, and that will give you everything turn coordinator, you know, all your tapes, uh, left side for your uh, miles per hour or your knots, I should say, and of course your altimeter, altitude indicators are over here, and you can move it around as, in any way you want to do it, compass, um, and this does GPSS, it'll do everything for you that the Garmin stuff does for you at a much less price. Um, you can also go back to display, um, you can go to map on that side, which is pretty cool. Again, when you have a flight plan put in, you will have a magenta line and you know where, you, where you're going to go direct uh, or a flight plan for VOR flight plans or your airways. All will be right in front of you um, and you can change it in any way you want to change it. And this is my basically first time here looking at this besides Oshkosh. Um, but then you go to engine and there's your engine. Um, it all depends how you're flying and of course cylinder temperatures uh, and you get the RPMs um, all that stuff is displayed and I'm going to get two of these screens is my goal, is my plan um, like I said, not 100% yet but this is the way to go for me um, I don't need the Gorman stuff because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's an extra extra expense um, I don't have a twin, I don't have a you know, very very expensive plan to dump sixty thousand dollars of the avionics in the in the dash um, but this is a, a very very good system um, that I've looked at and looked at did a lot of research on um, and it's pretty cool pretty cool stuff and I'm just still trying to figure this out I've been messing with it before I got on the camera here with you guys but it's a lot of more to look at um, they do have knobs so you can put you know where, where you're going um, you want to go to, you know, it's just all kinds of fancy stuff here. I'm still trying to figure. I'm still trying to figure out your altimeter. So if the altimeter seven is three one, you know, three one, you know, zero zero, for example, whatever. Um, that's your altimeter, and you have everything here. It's pretty cool. You have you do have buttons as well. Um, altimeter is there. And this could be your knots, how fast you want to go. So let's say you want to go to 140 knots on a, on a descend or a, a departure, you can do that. And you go back to this knob here, you push that, it brings you up again, some more options. So it's a, it's pretty, it's a pretty cool stuff. And it has uh, so much stuff to do. Menu here is the autopilot situ inf information. You can do it autopilot from here. Okay, if you can click on that, you can do the autopilot from this screen. You know, nose up, nose down, um, altitude hold, track, um, heading. Um, you know, all kinds of fancy stuff here that you could do. Uh, and 
to do altimeter hold. So altimeter hold, so you get to your altimeter setting and you want to hold that 3700, 3, it'll hold you there. Or you can exit out of here, or you can go over here um, to the buttons on the unit and you can do it there as well and hopefully have enough light to show you here. Um, but you also have this stack. Level, if you're in, a, if you're in an emergency, uh, you just hit level flight and now level you off in case you get caught up in the clouds, something happens, you get disoriented. Uh, you can hit that level flight and it'll bring the aircraft level for you. But this system here is all over here as well. So you hit menu, which is right here, and then your autopilot, and that's your autopilot settings. Um, go back to menu, um, weather options, uh, of course, your next rad, uh, which is, you know, next rad is about well, six, seven uh, minute delay typically. Um, but here you have your settings, weather. You can display that on the screen, not on the screen. Um, other functions here. Uh, what else here? What else? What else? Was I messing around with? Your timer, of course, is there. Stop timer for your, for your stuff you got to do with um, uh, IFR stuff. Uh, so it's really, really, really cool. Flight pan plan is right here. Um, I don't know how to really <laughs> mess with this stuff yet. Like I said, I'm just trying to mess around with it. But you can go to K. Let's just put type in and see what happens here. This is all new to me, just like it's new to you guys right now. K. Uh, we'll go to M G. Where does G? M G J. Orange County. Insert that. And then go to MGJ November 4 3. We'll put in. Um, oops, I forgot I could do this. I'm used to the buttons with my 480. So I'll go to November uh, November 4 3. And that's Braden Air Park. We'll insert that. And then. Should be good to go, I think. <laughs> Navigate. Okay, and that should navigate us to direct to Braden um, Air Park. So you know, so I can get I can get rid of basically all my steam gauges. Hey guys, we're back. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I'm still trying to mess this thing a little bit. I was talking to uh, Pete over here at Moira Aviation about some stuff. But again, this is a pretty cool system. Um, with the display option here, um, you can do full screen, split screens, engine monitoring on one side, as you could see here, uh, which is really cool. It even gives you the flap indicator um, and trim indicator. It all depends what you want to do. Um, you can also go back to display menu um, and do what you need to do. You can always you can make it any way you really want to. Um, let me see here. Oh, go to settings, and you can make it left. This screen can be on the right side if you want it to be like that. Uh, move everything over, um, and then that on the left side. Uh, back to display. Oh, go to settings. Go to left. Change it back to the left. You can have one side just um, engine monitoring. Um, but when when you order the unit. You know, you get, get them your POH. Uh, Diane will put in all the red lines and yellow uh, indicators for you, so it matches your airplane on how it actually would work. Uh, but this is basically what I'm looking at. Um, exit, exit, and menu, autopilot. Um, so it, it gives you everything you need to 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 know and or to get what you want actually in. An aircraft instead of having multiple displays now this will get rid of my um, engine display and everything uh, it's gonna be basically all glass and not have to worry about it because everything is right here and I'm gonna have I would get two 10 inch screens uh, which this is a 10 inch screen um, one on the pilot side one on the one on the auto uh, the co-pilot side of the airplane um, and obviously this is, this is the backup, so I would get this. It's very easy to use too. You want to change your barometer. Um, very simple to use as well. You can just increase it. 3002. Um, very, everything is easy. Buttons, you have buttons to use. Um, also down here, and, and or you just use a touchscreen feature. 
um, display. Go back to map on that side. And with the with, with this with the right side, you use this button for the right side of the screen, and then you would use this for for this side of the screen, left side. Or you can just pinch it on how you want to do it, move it around, and then if you want to go back to where you were, you would just hit this button right here, and it brings you back to where you were, and it gives you your flight plan information on the right side as well. Go back to here, zoom in, zoom out. Uh, very easy to use. I'm still messing with it a lot. Uh, just trying to figure out the direct, direct, navigate, oop, navigate. So then also, if you go back to my screen here, where am I at here? Uh, you click on this. Oh, that's not it. I was going to do. Oh, there we go. Uh, if you click on the airport, you also really get remarks. Hopefully, it's zooming in for you. Um, if not, I apologize. I have the GoPro here, but and you can also runway information. It gives you all the runway information. So it has once one one uh, two nine uh, one six three four. It's favoring one six. So the way the winds are uh, and weather. Because you it's obviously not going to be reported because it's not hooked up to the weather. Uh, this, this is just a demo unit. Um, and then you have your comms, tells you what comms, and then you can just put them in the system if you want to. Scroll down or up, click on it. Departure frequencies, approach frequencies. And that's all my the recent stuff that I was just messing with right here. Uh, and then go back, exit out, and then you're back to this particular screen. But I'm still messing around with this, this navigation stuff here. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna get out of this exit. I'm gonna go to display. I'm gonna do full screen here. But that's pretty cool too to be able to have a full screen like that. And then you can just change your altimeter. How you want to do it? Oh, I'm actually look at crashing. <laughs> the display is hitting mountains here. Uh, whatever. But it does have. This is all synthetic vision. So. That would also happen as I'm flying through some mountains here. That's pretty cool. Um, so it's a pretty cool unit. So this is what it, what it really, what really, really, you know, I'm thinking to, to purchase. And then if you go to your transponder, um, you can do 1200, you know, where's the zero, zero? Oh, here it is. 1200, ident, VFR, you can just hit VFR, and then that will give you that um, on, off, ground, standby, so it's it's again you don't even have to have a transponder. My my L3 Lynx transponder that I have in my airplane will work with this. So if I don't want to use my transponder, push the buttons, I would just I could just use this as my transponder. Uh, you know, three five three two five six ident right there, you ident and you're and you're done. Um, so then you go back to it. If they change it. And you have a function. If you go back to transponder, you have a function here to go back, and it'll also give you the time you want to do engine, um, all kinds of autopilot features. So if you want to change your your settings, you can, and then go right into autopilot, and then you can change what you want to do. Altimeter hold. I should probably take that off so I can stop hitting the mountains here. So I took the altimeter hold off, uh, and then track. Obviously, it's GPSs like I said before. Um, so this is a unit. Um, so over this side, I'm not going to need this. This is, the, this is for the comms. Again, I hope you guys can see it. I'm not going to need this. I already have a comm stack already. Now I'm not going to really need this. is for the autopilot for um, the pressure. Um, what else does this do? Yeah, I'm not going to need that. Altimeter hold, barometer, um, track. I can just use this. So I might not need this either. What I'm going to need which I want, I'm, I don't have to have it um, if it's already in here. I like to have some hard keys just for the autopilot system in a level function. This way, God forbid there's a passenger with me and I have some problem, the passenger knows to hit level and they can figure it out from there with ATC. Um, but very cool system and this is also very easy to use. And the uh, radio I'm looking at is also the five, 40 um, through Avidyne 
and that's this. This is an older one, uh, so it's not the upgraded one, but it's on display here. And this is this would be my com uh, GPS and all that fancy stuff. Weather will be on here right now. I have the Garmin uh, 480 and it's very difficult to uh, do a flight plan and if if I go direct I do a flight plan I go direct somewhere ATC says go direct to Huguenot it's very hard to go back in a flight plan and, 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 and do that um, but this system is, is so much more easier um, and this is what I'm also thinking about getting uh, this this will be a backup I have to get that two of these screens with autopilot um, and with my Lynx transponder, all will work together with this system and also with this system. And this is gonna be perfect um, for me. And again, this is, an, this is an older one, so it's not the updated version, but it's similar, but it's a little bit more, the, the newer one, the 540, is um, a little bit more easier. Um, I don't have to get the 550, has the um, synthetic vision and so on and so forth. I don't need that because I will get synthetic vision in the Dynon um, Skyview. So I'm not going to have to have that. So I'm going to save myself $4,000 if I just go up to 540 instead of the 550. So that's my also my plan because um, it's very, you know, easy and user friendly to have this system. And when it all works together, it makes it a lot easier for me also <laughs> because it's just easier. And with the flying that I do, um, usually I go pretty far. I don't really bring the cameras with me when I go far. Uh, it's a lot easier, safer, and everything is right in front of me. But there's this plane taking off. It's in demo mode, but there's a plane taking off. And I can go over to my autopilot. I can bring it over here. I'm using this, this button here to turn and then line it up with the... So you had the planes turning. And the planes turning at a regular bank, and just line up. It's like three, zero, zero. And then you can do that. Everything is touch. And the GPSS function. This is will be built in. Is uh, the autopilot right now is not um, ready yet per se for the Mooney M20C Ranger yet. Um, but what they're going to do is they would cut a hole for it and put a plate over it and this will be ready and all it is folks to go behind the unit here that's the unit that's how skinny look how skinny that screen is and that's the unit so it's basically plug it in and put it into the system here um, and that's how easy it would be when the autopilot comes available uh, which apparently I am told uh, middle of 2020 which is six months away or so um, and all they would do is put the this in you know, uh, and plug it in to, to the back of the unit. So, but that, folks, is pretty much it. Um, and I'm also going to lose weight, lose some weight in the airplane. So I get some, you know, a couple pounds of useful load. Uh, but nothing crazy, crazy. And also, if when I get rid of the vacuum pump, that will also save me some weight. So all in all. That is pretty cool. That's what I'm thinking about doing. Um, and I'm gonna make a decision very shortly. So if anybody has any ideas, you think this is a good idea or not, uh, let me know, put it in the comments below. I'm gonna, I'm gonna post this on my YouTube uh, channel here. Um, so I've been getting a lot of emails what I'm doing. And that's my, that's my idea. I was gonna get two G5s and wait for the autopilot to come out for the M20C on the Garmin side. It's not ready yet. Um, but if I'm gonna spend with two G5s and an autopilot, 16,000, 17,000, about $16,000 plus insulation, folks, I can tell you, I'll just go with something like this. Like I said before, I'm not flying a twin. I'm not flying a $500,000 airplane, a $200,000 airplane. So if I can save myself $25,000, and do this system now instead of waiting to save more and more. It's just, it's just a way to go. And it saves me a lot of money. I could be more comfortable paying for it. Uh, and it does the same thing as a barman would do. Um, and it's that much less. Because you know what, folks? You're never going to get your money back in 
avionics uh, in an airplane. You might get a little bit of back when you come to sell it, but not much. So why would I throw $50,000 at it with Garmin when I can throw $25,000, $26,000 at it with the Dynon system um, and have two screens, you know, instead of just one? So that's where makes my decision really 90% to go with the Dynon system. And again, this is exactly what it will, this is exactly what it's going to look like on my screen. And again, like I said, your display functions, you can change anything with settings, however you want to do it. Um, the engine, the bottom, you put it on the band, you can split it. The engine could be on the side. Does, you know, it's so much you can do. And what I, what I would do is, is I would, on departure and on landing, I will put the engine monitoring system right in front of me. So this is where the yoke's, obviously where the hole is for the yoke, and that's about where my mine is. Um, on departure and landing, I can just look exactly at all my oil pressure, fuel pressure, you know, I got tanks here, um, on departure. Once once I get in the air and I'm at cruise, at, at my, you know, my altitude, what I will do is on the second screen I'll have, over here, <laughs> uh, I will just put the engine monitoring system and open this screen up um, with, you know, make this bigger, make that bigger for me. It would just be easier. And the engine monitoring will be on the other screen on the um, co-pilot side and much bigger. Um, and like I said, menu, um, engine tools, what is this? Oh, okay, so you can do lean a peak, fuel, clear trip timer. So, so much stuff I got to really, really do. And I don't want to have you guys here forever. Uh, that would be kind of boring. Um, let's see real quick here. And there you go. So I'll probably have something like this on on the uh, co-pilot side when I'm when I'm in cruise and on and on um, departure I will have get rid of the fuel gate uh, get rid of the engine monitoring system and make this bigger and have the split screen is what I would do and that's gonna be right there so that's the map and there's all so the maps on this side which is basically my iPad and my tapes speed indicator, um, altitude, um, directional gyro, and my turn, my bank turn coordinator will all be on this screen. Once I get rid of the engine monitoring, it, it just brings it up. I just don't know how to, to do that right now <laughs> with you guys. There's so much to learn, but it's pretty easy because it, it, it all tells you in pretty big letters here where you need to go. You can do the button or you can push the screen. So whatever you whatever you want to do um, is is you know easy and the buttons and there's no glare at all and this has they have little tape here I don't want to pull that off but without this tape it'll be less of a glare um, for me so folks there you go there you have it that is going to be what I'll be looking at um, the the, the Dynon. Um, Skyview 10 inch screen. It's only $1,200 less for the smaller screen, so I'm going to get two of the 10 inch. Um, and then it also might might not go with the Avidyne 540 if I can get a good price uh, because all my Garmin stuff that I have now will be for sale and will be sold. I can make money off that because it'll come with the tray, all the connections, uh, the GPS, its WAS. So I can get some bucks for that, which would knock this down in price. So that's my decision so far. This is what I'm thinking to do so far. Um, and hopefully you guys think it's pretty cool. I think it's it's great for the price. And we'll see what happens. Um, I'll keep you guys updated. And uh, But that's all I have for you today. Again, I'm at Moyer Aviation in Mount Pocono Airport. A uh, great group of people here. They do all kinds of stuff. Actually, I'll bring you guys outside here. You can see. Um, they do full twins. are doing everything today. Um, it's a great, great operation they have here. Kurt's a manager, and he's a great guy. Um, and it's seven days a week, basically. 
here is what they what they operate because that's how busy they are. Um, and Pete, the avionics guy, is top notch. He's putting stuff in ex very expensive planes and cheaper planes. So I have no problem with the with these guys working on my aircraft at all. Um, but like always, guys, any questions you have at all, let me know. You can email me at pilotfun101 at gmail.com. You can also put some comments below. And if you like what I'm doing, subscribe to my channel. I appreciate that. You can find me on Facebook as well. Um, you know, over 12,500 followers on Facebook. If I can just get those guys to go to my YouTube channel, that'd be great. But we're working on it. So, any questions, let me know, folks, okay? Um, hopefully, this is what I'm going to decide on probably today. And I'll let you guys know. Maybe I'll wait until after the comments to pull the trigger on this stuff. All right, guys, like always, fly safe, be safe. Until next time, I'll see you.